Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ozark Outpost. This is Operation Goliath. The Commonwealth. Uh, one point, what are we up to now? Four. Uh, July 36. So let's just get right to it. Uh, the British smarting from uh, the German diplomacy in Iraq has decided they better get uh, offensive on that front. So they're going to try three influence roles. They're going to try uh, Greece, which is currently pro-British, Iran, which is also currently pro-British, and Poland, which is also currently pro-British. So, let's get over here. Uh, Greece. Looking for a three or less. Miss. Iran, same thing, three or less. Miss. And Poland, same thing. All three misses. Not too much luck there. Well, okay, now we're on to tech rolls. Now, uh, the uh, British have uh, two major factories, one in London, one in Ottawa. They also have a platinum resource marker in South Africa, uh, which gives them an extra research roll per turn. Now, I did make an error against Germany. Uh, I overlooked it. There is a platinum marker in Colombia that uh, gives its benefit to Germany until Colombia becomes uh, enemy uh, possessed. But we're just going to have to tell Adolf, uh, sorry, buddy, we'll catch you next time. So, the British are trying advanced ASW, wartime economy, and improved factories. All sevens. And they hit improved factories and missed the other two. So, stage one of improved factories for the Commonwealth. All right, purchase. There we go. I think you can see. The uh, British started with 11 pounds in the bank. They spent three on uh, influence rolls. The remaining eight, they're spending on a minor factory. Uh, FEC has five rupees, which they're saving. Anzac has three dollars, which they're also electing to save. Okay, so no combat. Uh, there isn't going to be any non-combat movement. Oh, wait, I'm a liar. Yes, there is. We have one non-combat movement right here. This submarine from Sea Zone 45, I believe. Yes, 45. One, two, three spaces into Sea Zone 80 in the mid. That's the end of non combat. Now, we are going to have a bit of strategic movement. Get over here. I think we can catch all the action. I think that'll work. Uh, this motorized infantry from Sydney is going to strategic rail out here to West Australia. The FEC transport here in C Zone 84 is going to strategic naval move one, two, three, four spaces to sea zone 144. Uh, that costs one oil, which FEC is going to pay for. And then I'm just going to go ahead and shortcut this. Uh, FEC and ANZAC between them have two oil wells. One at uh, 
Sarawak and one in Burma. So half, this is the oil that FEC and Anzac share, these two wells. So between them, they only get half that of one. So since FEC spent the one oil for the strategic movement, they're going to recoup that. So that's that. I'll show you, there's the uh, platinum resource in uh, South Africa. And then the one I mentioned for Germany in uh, Colombia that got overlooked there. All right, the only other thing is uh, uranium collection because the Commonwealth, Great Britain, does have a uranium mine here in Ontario. So they mine one uranium this turn. Now we're going to pull. Now we're going to place units. British have a destroyer and a fleet submarine that started off in the uh, place units box. So they're going to put their destroyer here in uh, C zone 24. They are also going to put their fleet submarine there in C zone 24. No, wait, can't do that because that's just a minor. So the fleet submarine will go over here in C zone 10. That will be a legal place. And then the minor factory is going over here in Eastern Egypt. I think with the uh, you know, the oil wars expansion, the Middle East has uh, become very, very important for the British. They're getting pressure there from Germany through diplomatic influence. They've got Italy sitting next door in Libya and to the south in uh, East Africa. So I, I think they're gonna need uh, the ability to reinforce directly in the Middle East rather than building at home and trying to ship stuff out or trying to rely on colonial troops. So there we are with that. Okay, uh, collect oil. As long as we're right here. Now Britain did spend one oil for producing ships this turn. So uh, that'll be taken away from uh, Northern England here. And they have oil wells currently. The two oil wells in southern Iran uh, go to Great Britain as long as Iran is neutral. And then, of course, there is one well there in British owned Qatar. Three divided by two rounded up is two. So the reserve here in Northern England will get a, a net gain of one. FEC, I already explained what's going on with their oil. Anzac isn't getting anything this turn. So uh, collect money. The British are up to 12 on the income chart and they're getting a plus two from resources. There's a sheep resource in other southern England, giving them a plus one. And then down here in West Africa, there is a cocoa marker giving them another plus one for two. So that's 14 pounds in the British bank. There we go. 
go. FEC has uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Malaya, whatever you want to call it, is uh, has its value bumped up quite a bit by this this expansion. There are three resource markers in uh, British Malaya. The top one is aluminum. Uh, that involves aircraft production. If uh, you get this taken away from you, your aircraft costs plus one more. If you take one of these away from somebody else, your uh, aircraft cost is minus one. There's also, uh-oh, knocking over an oil derrick. There is also a uh, tin marker and a rubber there. These are plus one each to FEC's income. So five plus two is seven. On to the five they saved. We'll give FEC 12 for next turn. Uh, Anzac isn't picking up anything extra, so they'll add three more and have six for their uh, income. And I believe that's it. Ozark Outpost, over and out.